Hello everyone. It is Monday, June 27th, and I'm doing another video. I finally am feeling better. Um, I, I had that sore throat and cough and all sorts of sinusy stuff for a couple weeks. And I don't know, I, I took a couple COVID tests and they said negative, but I kind of think maybe I had that. I'm so tired and everything. Anyway, so I was hoping to do this sooner, but because I'd ordered these underglaze pencils. And so that's what this video is about today. I ordered some Pazler, Pazler underglaze pencils. They're a little cheaper than the Amico. Amico's, gosh, they're like 14, 15, 16, and um, these Pazlers. I guess that's pronouncing it right. Um, there you go. I know it's backwards, but that's the way when you're videoing with the phone, that's the way it happens. That's the way it does. So I got um, packs of two. I don't know why I got packs of two because I probably never use them. <laughs> I have to say I'm not um, a huge fan of underglazed pencils. Um, I just... There's not enough colors and uh, movement, and you can't really mix the colors and layer them and stuff like that, which I like to do. Um, you can layer them a little bit, but um, they just, um, it's like it's like coloring in, you know, on paper with drawing, colored drawing pencils, and you know how that is. It's, um, I like the, the uh, if, you, if you draw with, they have the watercolor pencils. You ever use those? Those are fun uh, to draw on and then take a paintbrush and kind of go back over them, which you can do with these too, but um, there's not as many colors, you know, with the, uh, with the watercolor pencils that you can get. I don't know if it's Artistica or Artist makes those, but um, but yeah, anyway, I'm getting off, I'm getting off track. I always get off track. <laughs> I know when I first started making this video, I, well, I came in my my little studio here and um i thought gosh i, I got i want to do another video so then my table here had been piled up with stuff because i keep ordering stuff and you know things to try and I, next thing i know i'm cleaning and moving stuff and two hours later here i am ready to finally make the video <laughs> i thought maybe i have adhd I, it's hard to stay focused anyway <laughs> so anyway so I wanted to do a tutorial on underglaze pencils because I've seen so many people make videos of them. And um, in my opinion, I don't think they're using them right. <laughs> so <laughs> there's just, you know, it seems like there's an easier way to use them and uh, more creative. But anyway, so I'm using, uh, I'm Bisqueware. It says you can use them on greenware. I, I don't know how you use them on greenware or... Um, even complete leather hard clay because they would dig in and yeah they'd leave marks in so anyway so this is stoneware uh b mix five now this has the grog in it so if you were going to use um underglazed pencils all the time i would suggest using a white clay without the grog hang on chris Will you let Archie out? It never fails. As soon as I do a video, my little dog is sitting there wanting to go outside. He'll probably show up at the back door. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Chris, Chris is my son who uh, huh. helps me, <laughs> takes care of me. He's at the front door. <laughs> and you wonder why I get distracted. Anyway, this is... Um, B Mix 5 with Grog. I like it because I hand build with it. So that's where I buy it. But um, if I had, like when I made this plate, I wasn't thinking of using underglazes, underglaze pencils. Um, but when you trim these and, you, and you've got Grog in your clay, you can use a rubber rib and just as it's going around in the wheel, press down through your, with your rubber rib, say that 10 times, and it'll push the grog inside, back inside your piece, and it'll be nice and smooth. Um, you can also wet sand it if you want it to. But these are kind of test pieces. Um, 
and I won't have I won't have the results by the end of the video because I'm not that coordinated and uh, but when I fire them if I can figure out how to add it to this video I will <laughs> so but um but yeah so if you were gonna use a lot of underglaze pencils I would suggest using porcelain um, or any um, stoneware without grog but like I said I I hand build a lot with mine so you want the grog in your clay to hand build um, because it's stronger it cracks less and um, yeah it's just more forgiving so anyway before I bore you to death um, let me show you what I got Let, let's try these out <laughs> you can tell it's pretty out here today it's actually like 80 degrees and a little less than 80 degrees and not so humid so it's so nice I'm dying to be outside but it's got, I got too much stuff to do I was playing yesterday reading a book all day so got to get back to work <laughs> anyway let me lower you down here I hope everybody is doing well you can see my underglaze is still sitting out over here so I gotta do I want to I gotta look at it my brushes are still in here too you know how many times I've sprayed that <laughs> because I just left it go okay so the thing with underglaze pencils is I've got black brown red blue and yellow now the on the box it suggests that you trim them with a knife but if you can see you get a really weird tip when you trim them with a knife um, actually you know wooden pencils you know, my dad was a carpenter, and he always trimmed his, I should say trim, sharpened them. He always sharpened his wooden uh, carpenter pencils with a paring knife um, or with his pocket knife. And so I kind of knew what they were talking about. So, and it does, you know, supposed to prevent the, the underglaze from inside breaking off and you lose it a lot. But I don't know. So we'll, we'll try that. But the other ones I have an electric well actually a little battery this works great it's a little um, battery power pencil sharpener you just put them in that and it sharpens them really nice um, when you put these in the hand a hand sharpener you know one of the little plastic cheapo things if it gets caught on here like I said it can break these off so I would suggest an electric one or battery operated one or to do it by hand um, but yeah, so you're, you're kind of limited, limited to your colors. Now, I see a lot of people drawing on their pieces with a dry. You can either, and if you, if you want a smoother line, you dip your pencils in water. And that is, that is my little, my little tip. And that's what I think a lot of people are doing wrong. They try to use them dry. And they kind of end up um, going on your piece kind of scratchy. So what I would suggest is taking a sponge and I'm actually going to wet this. And see how much smoother this goes on. And I may re-wet it. Um, which will be a little harder to do once I have a design on there. So I may just dip these in water. I have a little cup of water here. So I'm going to dip my brown in water. Now this is an Amico. My black and my brown are Amico. So I've had them for a while. Um, but when I went online, the only thing I could find was the Paslers. P-A-S-L-E-R. So... I'm going to draw, and it's going on, um, it is still kind of scratchy, but that's okay. I hope you can see this close enough. Let me, let me move this in here, my trusty tripod I bought. There you go. So I hope if you, you can see it kind of went on a little scratchy, but I'm going to add water 
to them because I don't like that scratchy uh, look. And of course you can go over this um, with a with a paintbrush, which we'll try that too. Yeah, see how scratchy that is? Because this plate is kind of a test plate. Let's see, something once here. Try all my paintbrushes here. Let's just give this a go. There we go. Now I'm not looking for a really sharp line, so if you're looking for really crisp lines, you would not want to do it this way. But I do not like the the ruggedness, I guess, of it though. I also bought some pastel chalks that are under glaze. And I thought I'd give those a try. I've had I've actually had those for a while. I tried them a while back. So you can tell the tip is already pretty worn down. So you go through it faster. Let's see how this a little trusty. I think the blades are wearing down. Okay, so um, let's see here. I'm trying to make like a vine, kind of like a vine, um, not a vine wreath, but like a viney design here that okay so I'm going to dip my pencil in water yeah it really helps the, the water really helps Sure, this is still in the picture. And I'm going to take my spray bottle. Got a little trusty spray bottle here. Oops, geez. Might want to test that, Lisa, first, right? Using my brush. Let me know if anybody's tried this method. Um, I was always taught to dip my underglaze pencils in water before using them, but I've seen videos and tutorials, and nobody seems to do it that way. But it fills in all these little gaps really well. So see that? I think that's much better than the scratchy, scratchy mark. So okay, let's see here. I guess, guess I'll do blue because what other color do I have but yellow and red? So I might maybe I'll do some yellow centers. Um, let's see what kind of. I would have decided what kind of flowers I want to do, wouldn't you? Pre-plan this a little better. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, see that's oh screechy. 
Wow, that's screechy. Screechy, screechy. So I'm going to spray that down. Dip that in water, get my pencil. The markings are so much darker. Now, I do want to, um, so I'll get this. I'm going to try to take out this blue here because you cannot you cannot layer these like you can underglaze regular underglazes. And I really wanted to um, put a little yellow in there, so I should have left that blank. But so let's see. We're going to take take this brush and with a little bit of water just gonna now I'm gonna apply a clear to this and, and it should these should turn out exactly like what you see underglaze pencils are even more stable than regular underglazes. Oh, I forgot to wet it. Whew. Sorry for the screeching. Wow. So you can see there's the first flower. Not real impressive <laughs> if you ask me, but uh, I'm used to my under underliner pen and all that. I think this time I'll draw the yellow here first. How was everybody doing? I got a message from, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, um, one of my followers from Australia, <laughs> she was saying it was, they had like a blizzard down there a couple weeks ago. That was when I did the video with, uh, oh my, th had, still had the sore throat. Okay. These, these pencils I um, really wear down fast. Archie, you're not going out again, honey. You were just out. I think he just hears me talking and he thinks, you know, I got to go outside. She's talking. Whew. You're not going out. No. No, you're not going out. You've already been out. No, he's going to start whining. He's such a diva. He's one of my Yorkies. Ooh, goodness sakes. I got a little bit of blue in the yellow. I'm going to have to sharpen that. There's one flower, two flowers. I'm going to have to sharpen that already. I'm going to take my brush. No. No, you're not going out. Listen to him. Oh my gosh. No. No, I said no. No. Okay, so let's do some yellow in there. Just do a little bit of yellow in the... There we go. That one actually has a little more color. 
um, than this one. I think I'm going to go over this flower just a little bit more. Let's see, I don't want to sharpen that already. Well, you could really go through a lot of, see how nicely that sharpens? Let's see here. All right, let's do, we'll dip it in the water. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, different ways that you can use underglaze pencils. Um, now I could just draw the outlines on here and then, um, oh goodness, draw the outlines on here and then go back with regular underglazes and fill them in. So I could do that too. Chris? Christopher, Christopher, see if my son hears me, otherwise you might see me strangle this dog on the video, and that wouldn't be good. Didn't I tell you no? I'm going to open the door, hang on a second, hang on a second, all right. All oh, these dogs, goodness sakes. Okay. He'll probably want to come back in in five seconds. We have a little baby bird trying to learn how to fly out back. So I'm trying to keep the dogs in the house. Sophie, my big Brittany, who is a bird hunting dog. We don't hunt, but I don't know why we got a bird hunting dog, but we did. She's a sweetie pie, but she likes to hunt birds. So we definitely, she had almost had one in her mouth yesterday and I had to yell at her. Now what's weird is this flower here, it got pretty wet here. So it's not letting me even add the yellow underglaze pencil on there. So I'm gonna have to wait till that dries. But these look nice, don't they? See how much darker they are when you wet the pencil first? Like I said, you can even, um, you know, miss the plate. It absorbs the moisture and then, um, yeah, it absorbs the moisture and the pencil goes on better. I have not uh, really been able to tell the difference. Oh, look at that little. Hmm. Can I say a can I say a bad word on video? <laughs> Excuse me. Let me go let this little. Oh, there he is. Here comes Chris. <laughs> My son Chris is making faces. <laughs> We swear he's like, you know, he's, he's such a diva. Archie is, um, I raised him from a, a, ba a baby. My, I had a female Yorkie and she was bred with our other Yorkie. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun to have pups. So 
So she got pregnant, which was, that was uh, a, kind of a nightmare. And um, lo and behold, she has two pups. And when she goes into labor, we find out that she's, um, they're, I think they were breech. So we had to rush her to the vet. That was quite expensive. And Archie, the one we have now, the one who is the diva, the one who whining. Uh, he, oh, goodness, look at that. Okay, so they're going on really nice. He um, he had severe um, intestinal issues, and the vet wanted me to put him to sleep. Well, there was no way I was going to let that happen. So I went to another vet, and we I hand fed him, and gosh, had to phew, do all this stuff to him. And after about, I guess, three months, just when I was about to give up trying to save him, he, he all of a sudden, he started thriving and putting on weight. And um, so, yeah, so we saved him after the vet wanted to put him to sleep. And after all that, we decided to keep him. I, I couldn't let him go. But since he's been babied so much, now he's a diva and... Of course, he's 13 years old now. So he grew up from being the runt of the litter of two. The other one we sold, which that, that broke my heart too. I'm, I, I have a I have a tender heart when it comes to animals. I, I, so that was the last time we ever bred any because it was too stressful. <laughs> Okay, so let's add some yellow. Hmm. Yeah. What do you think so far? You can kind of see a little bit closer there. Yes, yeah, so I don't know how people really use these without wetting them. Either wetting your your clay a little bit. So I'm kind of looking at the composition, and I guess it's okay. I'm gonna, I am going to add some. Oh, <laughs> I said I was going to add some green leaves, but guess what? I don't have a green underglaze pencil. But I am going to add a few from my underglazes over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit. Um, I do want to use my red underglaze pencil though. I'm going to dip that in water. And I'm just going to put a little bit around each flower here. Just around the, the center part. Because you know me, I don't, I don't like just solid boring colors. You gotta, gotta add some color. And I've, some of you guys have shown me pictures of um, drawings you have done and paintings you have done after watching my videos. And oh my gosh, you guys are doing awesome. My gosh, some of them are just, they're just gorgeous. They're better than mine. <laughs> Yeah, they are great. And it's so much fun to see um, how everybody does it a little bit differently. Um, I've seen a few a few red birds. And um, gosh, they're just so cute. They're all, some are fat, some are thin. They're, they're so cute. I'll be doing pumpkin videos. Um, probably not till July. But we'll definitely have to do some more pumpkin videos, won't we? Okay. So I'm going to try to add yellow back to the center here. It's, it's really weird. It doesn't want to... Maybe I'll get this wetter. I don't know. It doesn't want to 
that doesn't want to get too yellow there. Now, I could outline these with the black pencil, but when I drew them with the blue pencil, you can tell I already have a blue outline. So I kind of think it would be weird to have the black outline alongside the blue outline. But what I'm going to do is, um, oh, you know what, I'll do the black first. Okay, so I'm going to dip, I'm going to dip my underglaze pencil back in the water, and I'm going to draw some leaves, and then I'm going to go back with the green underglaze. This, this bowl may turn out completely ugly, but I hope not. <laughs> I think it looks pretty cute now. What do you think? It is really rough because, like I said, this was kind of this was kind of a test bowl. <sighs> um, it was never meant to really be perfect. Okay, so let's uh, dip that back in water. Let's see, I'm trying to, okay. All right, so let's do a little bit of, this is um, Amico Velvet Underglaze. It is the avocado, my favorite, my favorite color for leaves. So this is going over the underglaze pencil. And because the underglaze pencils are on a dampened piece of bisque and they're wet, the underglaze kind of sinks into the bisqueware and it isn't just laying on top in a dust form. Um, I think if it was, the underglazes would smear, but these are not, these are not, the leaves are not smearing. So all these videos I see where they don't wet the pencils or the bisqueware. I'm not quite sure why they don't do that. Um, I think I'll do one more. I'm kind of liking how these leaves are turning out. And I believe the black will show through the, uh, the green. Let's see. I'm going to put a dab of yellow underglaze on here because it's bugging me that that pencil won't stick. I probably have too much. A little too much um, saturation on there. So it doesn't look like much there. Because I've covered up some of the black and lines, but there it is. So can you see how much darker the colors are when you wet them a little bit? Let's see some of the... And you can see the leaves... Can you see the leaf there? You can kind of see through. You can see through the green to the black. So I will leave this video here. Um, I don't know, I was going to do another one, but I think I'll do one with regular underglazes. Because these, um, I don't know, they're okay. 
it's a nice it's a nice soft kind of a soft uh, crayon look almost which is fine um, it'll be interesting to see how it fires <laughs> like I said um, let's see let's put it let's put another let's put the white clear glaze on what did I found at the store I bought everyone they had well they only had like three or four I bought three of them so this is Amico's HF9 Zinc Free Clear. This is my favorite underglaze of all time. I never really had this cloud on me or anything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and order a whole gallon of it. Because what I do is if you order a gallon of it, then you can add like a cup of water at least to the gallon, and then you can just dip your stuff. It's cheaper to buy the powder, but it's harder to find the powder. Um, and even this, I will add a little bit of water to. Because I don't apply my underglazes very thick. And never, never apply more than two coats of any under of any clear. They, um, unless you've had better luck than me, uh, I've never, the clears like to cloud. And I'm, like I said, I've never really had a problem with this though. But then again, I don't, I don't apply more than two. People always ask me, um, how do I apply the clear without smudging the decoration? And my trick for that is this Mako brush. It's a Mako Soft Fan. It says CB618. It's a number eight. But this brush, look how thick this is. Can you see that? You can see the glaze coming out of it. But it is nice and thick. So the trick to applying, I want to make sure that's stirred up really well. The trick to applying a clear glaze to an underglaze piece is to apply it softly and liberally. So the first, look at how much is on there. Make sure you get a lot of glaze on there so that when I apply it, look, I'm applying one stroke. I am not going over it again. I'm loading up that brush and I'm softly going over it. And that's it, okay? So now I'm gonna go over the places where I have not done underglaze. But that first coat, you just barely put that on. Let it dry. Do not try to go over it. That is where I think people are messing up. They're trying to put on both coats at the same time and they're applying them um, too harshly. And the and when you are when you're applying really not just clear but any glaze, the brush is so important. If you can afford it, these are like ten dollars now, but I have three of them. I apply all my glazes with these unless I'm trying to get into a tiny spot with my under glazes, those I use the smaller brushes. But when I'm applying a regular glaze or a clear glaze, I always use this Mako fan brush. It's got to be thick and soft so that you can don't get one of these cheap ones where that you got you know you get ten bristles in there because that won't do you any good because it won't hold enough glaze and you'll be you know going like this across your piece. I see that so many times they you know <laughs> and then they wonder why when it comes out of the kiln it's splotchy. Whoops, my finger's still wet. I'm gonna apply a little on the side. Hope you can see that. Yeah, so like on the sides, when you're, it doesn't really, you know, you can go back and forth like this. But you can't, when you have a design on it, you can't do that. Clear is much more forgiving when you're. And of course, I do make a mess when I'm glazing. 
same as when I'm painting anything. I don't, whenever I'm painting, you know, my living room or something, I get it. I get it all over me. <laughs> I think I told you when I was painting my bathroom, I got that halfway done, but uh, somehow I stepped in the paint. Then I had it on the ladder. Then I had it on the floor. <laughs> Oh, goodness. And then, then I, you know, I always wear clothes that I think, oh, I'm not going to get any on me. And then I end up getting it on me. Okay, so this is dry. It's a little wet spot there, but it's dry enough where I can put the second coat on. So one thing I'm noticing, there's a couple little chunks of underglaze pencil. You don't want that. If it's coming through the clear glaze, um, it will continue to come through. So if you see any chunks, wait till it's dry and just just wipe them off because they will come through the clear and you'll have like a dull spot. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so I'm going to load up my brush. There we go. See how smooth that goes on? There. I'm going to do one more coat on this inside rim, and that should be two coats. And there you go. So now I've got two coats of clear on there. Whoops, I missed a spot. Two coats of clear on there. And that is going to be all I'm putting on here. So I'm going to set that aside and I will fire that and I will show you guys what it looks like. If I can add it to this video later, I will. So here's the one, I, the bowl I did the other day. <clears throat> this is all under glaze regular under glazes as you know if you've watched the video so I'm going to apply a clear glaze to this really fast see I'm just applying it on there boom okay that's the first coat I'm going to turn it around so this has not been fired yet this is bisqueware I applied amico velvet under glazes on the bisqueware and I just let it dry. This has not been fired. So it is not smearing at all. Long as your underglazes are 100% dry. And just apply that really liberally. Don't go, don't go back over it again until that is completely dry. Now I'm gonna do the inside I'm going to load up my brush and I mean it is dripping off and just just go over each thing one time there okay so that's one coat on there now I'm going to flip it back. Ah, I'm going to flip it back over. So I'm going to kind of set it on here. There we go. Normally I would let that dry longer, but since I'm doing a video, I'm going to put, go ahead and put my second coat on. And if you are glazing and you see any little pinholes coming through, Usually that's because when you bisque fired, you probably bisque fired pretty hot. I bisque fired to cone 04 because it helped get all the organics out of the clay so that when you glaze it, you don't have those organics coming through and then you have pinholing. So I always bisque fired to cone 04. But I do have a few little, I can see little um, pinholes. You know, which is different than the pinholing with the glaze firing. 
these pinholes are just like basically air bubbles coming through wait till this glaze is dry and then just take your finger and go over them so you can see how can you see the little pinholes in there just wait till your glaze is completely dry and then it's with your finger just you know rub over those they'll they'll fill in you won't have to worry about that so I'm going to put one more coat on the inside. And like I said, I'm layering up this brush. This brush is full. I'm dripping it all over, but it goes on nice and smooth. And I will, of course, show you the kiln opening. And these are all fired. I may take these into where I work and fire them there because I don't have a whole lot to fire here. Okay. So I've got that second coat. I'm going to let that dry. And then I will fire it. And I hope you guys... Will, oh, there we go. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I think I've... Let me try to adjust that. Upsie daisy. There we go. I bought a uh, tripod, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to be any better than the last one I had. Anyway, so... I think I answered, hopefully I've answered all the questions about the underglaze pencils um, and how I do it and how I feel like it's a good way to do it. Um, as far as sharpening it by a knife, with a knife, um, it is a thicker end and it doesn't wear down as fast. So it's not a bad, you know, bad idea to do that, I guess. You do go through more underglaze pencil tips with it wet because you know more is applied so so I think that's it I'm going to fire these to cone five um, I will probably do a 10 minute hold um, but I think that's about it if I've forgotten anything if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments um, I do my phone's kind of glued to my hip which isn't always a good thing but um, if I see the comment, I will answer you back. Um, and if you like what you see and you think you're learning something, please hit subscribe. Um, and please share with, you know, other potters and stuff. I would appreciate it. And I think that's, that's all. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And have a great day. Um, it's so pretty outside. Hope you guys get to get outside and enjoy the enjoy the fresh air. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.